This is a CVT transmission. CVT transmissions are shiftless gearboxes. They have no gears because they have an infinite gear ratio that goes forever and ever and ever. Nissan has been using their CVT transmission for more than 20 years, since its first major application in the Nissan Murano back in 2003. They called it the Xtronic CVT, a transmission that Nissan had been developing since 1992. Nissan was arguably the first major mainstream company to go big with the CVT transmission, though there were a few notable applications from various automakers, such as Honda, Ford, Toyota, and even Nissan themselves before that. Subaru uses them, I think Honda and Toyota use them some. I don't think anybody's had particularly good results yet. I'm surprised they're still being used at all, frankly. Take the 1997 Toyota Prius, for example. Though only offered in Japan at the time, it could be equipped with Toyota's earliest planetary CVT technology. Feedback from the Japanese market was very positive. And with the Prius's success in Japan, Nissan knew there was potential with CVTs in the American market. And that inspiration sparked the development of the famed Xtronic CVT, an industry famous name for all the wrong reasons. When it was new, the Xtronic was a popular choice among buyers thanks to its smooth engagement and excellent fuel economy capabilities. However, time would tell a different story when it came to Nissan's newly introduced CVT. It was common for comp complete transmission failure to occur even before 100,000 miles, with many failures occurring even before 60,000 miles. There's a review on carcomplaints.com with an owner who had his transmission replaced at 25,000 miles. Generally, owners experienced excessive shuddering, jerkiness, delayed acceleration, strange noises, and burning smells, with some of these problems resulting in the car being thrown into limp mode, which is a security feature on cars that activates when a major fault is detected, reducing speed and switching off non-essential functions. Many owners were outraged, and as time went on, Nissan would be faced with a mountain of lawsuits, including a massive $277 million lawsuit in 2021. To understand what went wrong, we have to dive back to the beginning of the Xtronic CVT. But first, I want to start by briefly explaining how a CVT differs from a traditional torque converter automatic. For those who may not understand, a traditional automatic utilizes a fixed set of gears to determine the rate at which the engine spins. These gears and gear ratios vary between cars. For example, an economy car would utilize the gears to maximize the engine's fuel effectiveness, while a sports car would utilize the gears to maximize horsepower. Obviously, this varies greatly from car to car, but you get the point. A CVT makes use of two pulleys attached to a belt that transfers power between the engine and the transmission. This allows the transmission to continuously change its effective gears and maximize the engine's capabilities for any driving style. This is why CVTs are so great at maximizing fuel efficiency in economy cars, because it allows the engine to operate in its most efficient state. CVTs are also much lighter and cheaper to manufacture than a traditional automatic, and that's where Nissan, among other brands, saw the potential in CVT technology back in the early 90s, which makes this the perfect time to bring up JATCO, which stands for Japan Automatic Transmission Company. JATCO is a joint venture between Mazda, Ford, and Nissan that was established in 1970 to develop and supply automatic transmissions for various automakers. It was through JATCO that Nissan adopted their CVT technology in 1992, though called the NCVT at the time that was implemented in the 1992 Nissan March and Nissan Micra of the same year. A few years later, a strengthened design called the Hyper CVT was adopted in 1997 for a more powerful 2.0 liter class of engines, while the Hyper CVT was also adopted into select Japanese models in Nissan's lineup. An even more strengthened design called the Xtroid CVT was adopted for 3 liter rear wheel drive vehicles in 1999. 
XDroid was a breakthrough in CVT technology, offering six-step virtual gears similar to how we see in modern CVTs today, in addition to its beefed-up internals that can handle the torque from 3.0-liter turbocharged engines, both of which bearing the famed VQ30 DET. Notable cars equipped with the XDroid were the Nissan Gloria and the Nissan Cedric, but it was from the XDroid that Nissan adopted the well-known Xtronic CVT that they still use to this day. As mentioned earlier, the first major application of the Xtronic was introduced in the 2003 Nissan Murano. Our first clue that the 2003 Nissan Murano was not your typical SUV was in the name. Murano comes from elegant sculpted glass art made on the islands near Venice, Italy, and the name fits. The Murano shape is definitely not your traditional boxy SUV. Which they described as, quote, an innovative transmission that offers smooth, seamless shifting while tailoring the vehicle's output to your driving style. The Murano was rated at 18 city and 23 highway, with a combined 20 miles per gallon paired with the CVT. Not bad for a hefty 3.5-liter V6 engine. However, driving the new Xtronic was less impressive. The public's reception was mixed. The most common complaints included a massive delay when accelerating, which could pose a genuine danger for drivers. A shaking and stuttering feeling during low-speed acceleration, transmission overheating, and stalling that can happen in the middle of traffic. I probably don't need to explain how that could be dangerous. It's important to note that these problems were brought to Nissan's attention in 2003 with the debut Murano model, and those same complaints stuck with the Xtronic models for the next 20 years. Not exactly a good look for Nissan, but let's not jump too far ahead in the timeline just yet. Whether or not Nissan would admit it, they knew they were going to be in for a ride. I'll be discussing that more later. But for now, Nissan's first real action was to issue a software update for transmission control modules that allows the modules to recognize certain issues, such as judder or belt slippage. When the TCM recognized these issues, it stored a diagnostic trouble code in its memory. These codes were then a part of a series of TSB, technical service bulletins, that Nissan released to dealership technicians instructing them on what to do when these codes are present in the TCM. By this time, they haven't publicly acknowledged any specific issue or design flaws with their CVTs, but the TSBs were at least an attempt to mitigate the growing number of complaints from customers. However, fast forward to the late 2000s and things would continue to go downhill. Customer complaints were still on the rise and several of Nissan's models that were optioned with Jacko CVTs were having similar issues. Vehicles from other automakers that use Jacko CVTs popped up on the grid for having similar transmission issues, such as the Jeep Compass and the Dodge Caliber. In light of this news and what seemed like a target being painted on Nissan's back, they had no choice but to extend the warranty of all their CVT-equipped vehicles to a 10-year, 120,000-mile warranty, which is double the standard warranty Nissan offers. Alongside that, they offered a repair reimbursement program in 2009 for customers that had to pay out of their pocket for their CVT repairs, which were not cheap by any means. Average repair costs were easily in the thousands with some full replacements costing more than $8,000. Unfortunately, that program was rather brief and ended in mid-2010. Word about Nissan CVTs being problematic was getting out to the public and the media. You could say a bit of a storm was brewing as the years went by. There was never a recall for any transmission components. Many owners were burdened by frequent repairs, or even entire transmissions being replaced. Luckily, most of those repairs were under warranty. But the amount of owners with CVT problems were more plentiful than you may think. To see a more in-depth customer perspective, just take a look at the thousands of reviews written under the Nissan section on car complaints. You'll find tons of entertaining customer stories regarding their CVT repairs. Many consider Nissan's stylish and affordable, but hundreds of owners are complaining about their transmissions slipping. I'll put that link in the description if you want to check it out. That leads me to my next point. Nissan still hasn't announced or acknowledged any sort of CVT defects to the public. Eventually, their silence would catch up with them in the form of a class action lawsuit. 
though this lawsuit specifically addresses about 100,000 2013 to 2014 Nissan Pathfinders and Infiniti QX60 vehicles. The lawsuit alleges that Nissan failed to warn customers about transmissions that can shake and shudder violently during low-speed acceleration due to a defect in design, making the CVTs prone to a CVT belt slippage condition. Furthermore, Nissan was accused of being aware of the defect since at least 2013. Because of the numerous complaints to Nissan dealerships, the NHTSA, the Better Business Bureau, and internet forums. More specifically, the conditions provided by the defective transmission could prove extremely dangerous for drivers. The transmission defect creates an unreasonably dangerous situation and creates the risk of a crash. It is inevitable that an individual will be injured or killed due to a collision caused by this safety defect. Though this settlement did not require Nissan to admit any fault, Nissan denied all allegations presented by this lawsuit. Eventually, after two years, a settlement was reached in mid-2017. Owners of 2013-2014 Nissan Pathfinder and Infiniti QX60 vehicles were offered additional warranty extensions on transmission components, or they were offered special pricing on a new Nissan or Infiniti vehicle. But it doesn't end there, because before that lawsuit even reached its final settlement, Nissan would get hit with yet another class action lawsuit in 2017 that accuses Nissan of the very same thing that the Pathfinder lawsuit accused them of, though this time with the 2014 Nissan Sentra. I recommend you buckle up for this next part, because a couple months later, another class action lawsuit was filed. Regarding the 2012 to 2017 Nissan Sentra CVTs, this time the lawsuit claims that Nissan's Xtronic CVT is prone to overheating due to a lackluster cooling system, resulting in early transmission failure. But the party's not over yet, because in that same month, another CVT class action lawsuit was filed against Nissan regarding the 2012 to 2013 Nissan Versas, alleging the transmissions failed early, either within warranty or just just outside of it. Phew. That's a lot of lawsuits. I'm glad there isn't any more. Except this 2017 CVT lawsuit addressing numerous Nissan SUV models. This 2018 lawsuit addressing all Sentra CVTs made after 2013? How about this one, addressing 2013 to 2017 Versa CVTs? Or this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and finally, the big and most recent one involving the 2014 to 2018 Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, and Infiniti QX60 vehicles equipped with CVTs. This was the biggest lawsuit Nissan faced. Of course, of course, the lawsuit alleges the same problems with Nissan's X-Tronic as all of the other CVT lawsuits they were involved in. A settlement was reached in 2023 where Nissan agreed to pay $277 million to resolve defective transmission claims. Now that's actually a lot of lawsuits. Recently, Nissan faced major class action lawsuits for several different makes of their vehicles. When these vehicles were found to have shaking problems, transmission problems that were causing the shaking, stuttering, stopping, rapid acceleration, all kinds of things you really don't want to see with your automobile. I won't go over the settlement from each lawsuit, or we could be here for another two hours. Only one class action lawsuit still remains against Nissan in 2024, regarding 2019 to 2020 Nissan Altima CVTs. The last update on that lawsuit was January 3rd, 2024. Many of these lawsuits are alleging the same issues, just with different models. Failure to accelerate, jerkiness, overheating, limp mode, all of them are equipped with Jatco CVTs. All of these issues, the same as what was described about the 2003 Nissan Murano CVT. In fact, seemingly worse. But if there's one thing that all these lawsuits have in common, it's that they're accusing of Nissan of being aware of these issues, but they choose to stay silent about them anyways. Now, despite all these allegations, there are plenty of owners who've reported no problems with their Xtronic. And in fact, the Nissan Maxima could be optioned with a CVT that was never a part of any lawsuits. And I haven't seen a lot of specific complaints with the Maxima CVT around the internet, at least nothing like any of Nissan's other models. I theorize that it's because the Maxima 
Maxima CVT is designed for a higher performance car, as the Maxima is Nissan's most powerful model that isn't the GTR. Though this is just a theory, and there isn't a whole lot of evidence to support that. Regardless, some people swear that people are only experiencing these issues because they don't keep up with their recommended maintenance intervals. I disagree. While yes, not keeping up with transmission maintenance is likely a death sentence for these Xtronic CVTs, or almost any transmission for that matter, there are plenty of accounts from owners involved in the various lawsuits as well as on various internet forums that have records of keeping up with maintenance, yet still experienced early transmission failure. So what do you guys believe? Do you think Nissan's wrong for concealing CVT issues from the public? Do you think that people may be overreacting to the CVTs being problematic? Let me know what you think in the comments. The Xtronic CVT is definitely a contender for one of the worst transmissions ever made. It may even be worse than the Ford PowerShift Dual Clutch. If you guys haven't seen what a disaster that transmission was, and how poorly Ford reacted to the whole situation, check out my previous video, or click on the pop-up you see on your screen. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video.